Hey guys, how's it going out there? I'm gonna try to prop this up on my balance on my steering wheel. You see that out there? That's our 20% uh, chance of rain. I think it just turned to 100%. I don't know whether you can hear that or not, but it's starting to come down a little bit heavier. Came out here to the park, do a little bit of walking. And since it's only 20%, may have been 30% at the max, but I think it's 20% or chance. And then it is incredibly windy. I did about a 30 second test video out there and you could hear just fine. Wind noise that is, you couldn't hear a word I was saying. So the wind has died down just a little bit, but it is still, it's starting to rain now. So I'm not gonna take you on a tour of the park. Uh, walking the trails today. Anyway. No, it's not Corn Cop Tuesday. Unless you're watching this on Tuesday. But in my last Corn Cop Tuesday video, I uh, put on there that, you know, just to update chat and about some different things that were going on. <clears throat> and uh, it's really coming down. I hope you can hear. I'll test it out here in a minute. Uh, but that I might have some things changing in my life that might not whether require is the right word or not But might require me to spend less time on YouTube Making videos and or watching and commenting on videos Let me roll that window up just a hair more and so uh, God I, I don't know if you've been following my channel, you know that I used to work for the camera company down in Dallas they went out of business a couple years ago. I've been doing independent contracting work, either construction, building, stuff like that, residential, and then working for uh, independent contracting for a company who does computer work in doctor's office running, you know, cabling, you know, up through the wall, over the, over the mountain, down the valley, and into a, like a network closet somewhere and getting them set up. But they haven't done a full roll out here in Oklahoma yet changing everybody over from analog or you know dial up to broadband and so they just haven't had enough work for me so i've been in the past few weeks i've been on the job search and so i've been sending out probably i'd say average uh 75 app slash resumes a week if not sometimes more than 100 yeah the rain's dying down a little bit and so out of all of that I've gotten three calls out of several hundred apps or resumes out there. Of course, you can't actually go physically talk to a decision maker. You gotta go through an online website, job site, or whatever, send in an app or a resume online. Uh, you gotta maybe do a phone interview, uh, do a first interview, a second interview, then they gotta call their boss to do a third interview, and it's like, can't you just send me straight to the guy who can say, no, we don't like you, or yes, we want to hire you. But anyway, did a first interview at one place. And they said, we'll call you back like on Monday for a second interview. Of course, you never hear from them again. Did a uh, first and a second interview at another company. At the end of the second interview, they offered me a position, said, here's what we would like to pay you, the position, what you'll be doing, blah, blah, blah. Do you accept the offer? Yes, I accept the offer. Okay, we'll call you back. That was like on a Friday. We'll call you back on Monday. We'll have you come in, do you know, sign some paperwork so we can begin the background check and you know, drug test and blah blah blah. Never hear from them again. And so, I get a call. Uh, answer it's un it's an unknown number, but I've been an which normally I don't answer them if I don't know the number. But since I've been sending out so many apps and resumes, I've been answering these. And so, there's this lady on the other end of the phone. She says, hi, this is um, Mary Jane. I'll just make up a name. This is Mary Jane. We want to know if you'd come down and fill out some paperwork. I said, what are you talking about? Who is this? Well, this is May Mary Jane at whatever, XYZ Company. Uh, you went online, filled out, you know, our apps, and in your resume. Uh, you applied for a job, wanted to work for us. I said, yes. She said, well, we need you to come down and fill out paperwork. I said, what are you talking about? What kind of paperwork do you need me to fill out? 
She said, well, we need you to sign all the consent forms to do the, so we can do a drug test. We can begin background check, require security clearance. So we'll need to, you know, get all that going. I said, I've never talked to anybody from the company. I've never had a interview. I said, you are the first person I've talked to. She said, yeah, that's fine. Just come down and, uh, you know, we'll, you know, I'll talk to you. So I went, I run down there. It's been a nice enough lady. I don't know whether this is their, I don't know whether this is the way they do things. Whether, of course, they got a corporate office up in uh, Lenexa, Kansas. And this is their, this is a dispatch center here out of Tulsa. And so I don't know whether somebody was supposed to interview me. I have no idea whether they hire anybody and everybody who comes along. If you got, you know, some type of common sense, do they hire you? So I go down there, talk to her for about 30 minutes. Um, sign the paperwork, do the drug test. Um, and then she calls me back like three or four days later, go back down there, spend a couple hours with her and we start doing, uh, I nines, W fours, uh, you know, again, consent to do the background check, the security clearance check, everything like that. Um, okay. I'm filling out an I nine and a W four. Does that mean I have the job? I mean, well, we're waiting on all the security clearance and background check and, drug test to come back. So, anyway, I get a call, go down there again this morning, and uh, they give me a job. And so I go to uh, work Saturday morning, and this is a company that drives, they're under government contract, that's why you gotta have security clearance, and we're on uh, train yards, freight train yards, hauling freight, you know, across the country. And so we have to fly. I'm gonna, I'm a driver. I'm driving conductors, engineers. Um, I was gonna say around the country. It's really they like to keep you within a uh, a 300 mile radius of your dispatch center. Got to roll the window up. Here comes the rain again. And so they like to keep you within a 300 mile. That way they can get you there and back before you run out of driving hours and you have to take a break because they don't want to pay for a hotel room or anything like that. So that's fine with me. Let's see if I can keep this pipe going. Talking too much, not smoking enough. And so anyway... Uh, I'll be driving mainly for two lines, Burlington Northern Santa Fe, and then another line out of Stillwater, Oklahoma, which I'd never even heard of before, but apparently they run Southern Oklahoma. I don't think they go out of Oklahoma like into uh, Texas or anything, but Southern Oklahoma all the way up into Kansas over into Missouri. And so you pick up a crew at, say, let's say, for example, the Tulsa Rail Yard, and they may be go relieving a crew somewhere out in the middle of the country somewhere that's run out of driving hours for the day or the week or whatever. You may haul, you may have a backhaul, haul that crew back to somewhere or haul them to another train. You may not. You may come back empty. You may go empty, pick up somebody, take them somewhere. Uh, sometimes you, what they call assist a crew in moving two or three trains or something like that, or so you may pick up a crew here, drive them, whatever, 100 miles to this location, they take that train, and they'll meet you back at this spot. And then you drive them 100 miles to that location, they get another train, bring it back to this spot. And then you drive them 100 miles that way, bring them back to this spot so they can link everything up, and they got the train loaded the way they want and take off with it. And so anyway, we'll, we'll run uh, typically a 12-hour shift, and, uh, of course, you can only drive 10 hours in that 12-hour shift, but you may be, you know, you may be at the rail yard waiting on, you know, dispatch or Burlington Northern to call and say, hey, we need you at XYZ location. Go pick up a crew. Or you've got a crew coming to meet you at the rail yard. They'll be there in half an hour. You need to take them to XYZ location. So that's what I will be doing. So... We're on 12-hour shifts. You can only drive 10 of that. You have to have one day off every eight days, and they like you to be on call basically 24-7. So if you've got driving hours available, and all of a sudden Burlington Northern calls up in the middle of the night, hey, we got a crew 
200 miles away that's out of hours, we need you to meet them at this spot in whatever, two or three hours, then, I mean, you're not required to take that shift, but it's probably a good idea to take that shift. One, you're earning money, and then uh, two, you you know, you can advance up into the company more, uh, get more senior status. And so, anyway, uh, we can't have any electronic devices in the vehicle, so I will not be able to listen, watch, use my cell phone in the vehicle. They have like a drive smart system, I think is what it's called, where they have dash cams. They'll have a cam pointed forward and a cam pointed back at the inside of the vehicle. So they're watching and listening to you. Now, I'm sure they're not doing watching, listening 24-7, but if there's an accident, you know they're going to click it on and uh, watch before and after and see what happened and what went on. And so anyway, if I've got a lot of downtime, I'm waiting, uh, you know, if I've got a two or three hour downtime while I'm waiting on a dispatch or a train crew or something like that, I'll be able to watch and comment and make videos. So you may see me on here the same amount. You may see me on here quite a bit less. So anyway, that's what's going on with me. Uh, now, that's not the ultimate job I want. There's another job that I really am going for that I am pushing hard to get. I just haven't got there. I just needed something to tide me over, get some cash in the door while I am uh, waiting on this other job to materialize, which may be may take it a couple of months to actually materialize if I get it at all. Uh, it'll be much easier, much less work. I know less than driving, but it will be much better hours, much, much better pay. So I got some guys on the inside who are talking me up, pushing for it. I'm pushing for it on the outside, so we'll see what happens. Anyway, just a quick update, uh, and I will talk to you all later. Hey, thanks for watching. I appreciate all the comments, likes, thumbs up, subscribers, shares, the whole works, and we'll catch you all next time.